students <coughs> today in this video program i am going to discuss to you people about the calculation of electric field density due to uh, due to an uniformly charged solid sphere that is our aim is to calculate the value of electric field intensity if we have got a solid body which is uniformly charged within its whole volumetric region so before i starting i would like to tell you about some cases actually while calculating the value of electric field intensity due to a solid charged a spherical body there are three different possible situations and one by one i will discuss about the three different situations so my first case it is when the observatory point p lies outside the solid sphere so before starting we have assumed this represents a solid sphere and this solid sphere has got the center o and let its radius is equal to capital r now it is a solid sphere so when charge will be supplied to this solid sphere this charge will be uniformly distributed in its entire volumetric region so let us suppose capital q coulomb of charge is given to this solid sphere now this charge q it this charge q it will be distributed uniformly over the whole volumetric region now consider there exists a point p this point p it is an observatory point where we seek to find the value of electric field intensity due to this solid charge as sphere suppose the charge it is positively char positive charge that is q is greater than 0 this q is greater than 0 now if you want to calculate the value of electric field intensity at the point p which lies outside this spherical body certainly as we are going to apply the gauss's law so we have to choose a gaussian surface as already i have discussed to you that while applying the gauss's law we select a gaussian surface and this gaussian surface depends upon the charge body since it is a spherically symmetric body so taking the center o and this distance op as the radius we draw a gaussian hypothetical spherical surface you can see this spherical surface which is represented by broken line it is the gaussian hypothetical spherical surface and it is concentric it means that the center of this gaussian surface and the center of this solid charge body both coincide with each other now it is a clear fact that this observatory point p will lie on the surface of this gaussian surface now imagine 
the electric field intensity which exists at the point P, let it is E. One thing I am going to tell to you people that at any point lying on this Gaussian surface, the field, the same electric field E will exist. Yani, इस सरफेस के किसी भी पॉइंट को यदि हम लें तो हर पॉइंट पर जो इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी की वैल्यू आएगी इट विल कम सेम एज द चार्ज इज पॉजिटिव सो द फील्ड विल एक्ट अलोंग रेडियली आउटवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो यू कैन सी हियर एट दिस पॉइंट पी द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड व्हिच एग्जिस्ट इज इट्स डायरेक्शन इज along radially outward it is clear now we consider an elementary area and this elementary area it is ds at this elementary area is ds and this elementary area ds is enclosing the observatory point p so firstly we will try to calculate how much electric flux will be originated through this elementary area. Now, let the, element, uh, the electric flux associated with this elementary area ds, yes, it is d5. So, it is clear that both vector e as well as ds are acting along the same direction. So, we write d5 is equal to vector e dot ds and it will equal to e into ds cos 0 degree and cos 0 1 so it will be e into ds. Now, what will be the total electric flux associated with the entire Gaussian surface? So for this, we will integrate this function. So we will write phi equals to closed integral E into ds. And this will come E into closed integral ds. Now it will come E into ds. Means the total surface area of this Gaussian surface. And it is clear that the radius of this Gaussian surface, it is a small r. I want to say that the distance joining the center O to the observatory point P, it is r. So, the surface area of this Gaussian surface, it will be 4 pi into r square. Let us take this is equation number 1. Now, if we apply the Gauss law, then we come to the conclusion that the electric flux associated with this Gaussian surface, it will come total charge, that is, the total charge is capital Q, so we write capital Q divided by epsilon naught. And let us take, this is equation number 2. So from equation 1 and 2, we can write E into 4 pi into R square, it will be equal to Q by epsilon naught. And from here, we can write E is equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon naught into R square. Now, in what manner this solid spherical charge body is behaving? Just imagine a point charge of uh, a point charge of capital Q Coulomb is located at the point O. So, if a point charge capital Q is located at the point O, then the magnitude of electric field intensity which will come into play at the point P, 
it had got the same value. Since the charge is Q and the distance is OP equal to R, so in this manner, this solid charge a spherical body is behaving like the wholesome charge which has been supplied to it is concentrated at the point O. So, any point lying outside the solid a spherical charge body, the electric field intensity, it is directly proportional to the charge and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance joining the center of the body to the observatory point. Now I want to discuss the second case. The second case is that when the observatory point P lies within the solid body. You can see here, this is the spherical charge body as already I have previously discussed to you, the charge supplied to it, it is capital Q. Its radius is capital R and center is O. Now, consider an observatory point P, which lies inside this solid charge spherical body. We will follow up the same process, that is, we will take the point O, as the center and this distance OP as the distance joining the center to the observatory point P it is equal to a small r so taking O as the center and OP equals to a small r as the radius we will again draw a Gaussian spherical surface so you can see this figure this this circular part it is representing the Gaussian spherical surface. It is represented by broken line. Now, consider an elementary area ds which includes the point P. This area, you can observe, it is an infinitesimally a small area. It is called the elementary area. And let the magnitude of this area, it is ds. Just imagine the electric field intensity which exists at the point P, it is capital E. Again, I am telling you, both vector E and DS will act along the same direction. So, angle between E and DS, it will be 0 degree. So, if you will calculate the total electric flux was associated with this entire Gaussian surface, then you can write directly phi equals to closed integral vector e dot ds and it will come integral e into ds cos 0 degree and it will come closed integral e into ds and it will come e into closed integral ds and it will come e into surface area of this Gaussian surface. As this Gaussian surface has got the radius equal to R, so its surface area, it will be equal to 4 pi R square. Let us take this is equation number 1. Now, we are going to apply the Gauss law. Suppose, the charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface, it is Q dash. So, if the charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface is Q dash, we will try to calculate the value of Q dash. What will be the value of Q dash? So, for this, firstly we will try to calculate the value of surface density of charge. The surface density of charge, it is given as rho equal to what? Charge divided by volume. The charge for this solid spherical body, it is capital Q and the volume is 4 by 3 pi into R Q as R is capital R is its radius. So, it will come Q 
3 cube, 3 will come here. So we can write, we can write 3 cube by 4 pi into r cube. This is the value of surface density of charge sigma. Now, the volume of this Gaussian surface, it will be given as V equals to 4 by 3 into pi into r cube, since the radius is r. Now, what will be the charge available within this Gaussian surface? To calculate, we write the charge Q dash, it is equal to rho multiplied by V. The value of rho, it is how much? It is 3Q divided by 4 pi R Q multiplied by V, that is 4 by 3 pi r q. This 4 will be cancelled out. 3 it will be cancelled out. Pi pi it will be cancelled out. So we have got the value of q dash equals to capital Q into a small r q divided by capital r q. Now, apply the Gauss law. According to Gauss law, the total electric flux associated with this Gaussian surface can be given as phi equals to charge. Charge is Q dash, so we write Q dash divided by epsilon naught. The value of Q dash, it is how much? Q R Q divided by capital R Q divided by epsilon naught. So what do you get? You will get Q into R Q divided by capital R Q into epsilon 0. That is Q into R Q divided by epsilon naught into R Q. This is the value of electric flux. Let us take this is equation number 2. Now from equation 1 and 2 we can write how much from equations 1 and 2 we can write e into 4 pi r square e into 4 pi r square this is equal to capital Q into a small r q divided by epsilon naught into capital r q. See here r square it will come r and from here we get the value of e as capital Q into a small r divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into r cube. This is the value of electric field intensity at the point P. I mean to say that this field will exist at any point lying within this a spherical body and on this surface. Now from this relation we come to the general conclusion that electric field intensity it is directly proportional to this distance r. 
Now, we want to discuss this electric field intensity at the center O. So, if this point P lies at the center O, it is clear that the value of R will be equal to 0. So, if R will come equal to 0, this tells that the value of electric field intensity at the center, it will come equal to 0. And 